Greetings, listeners. I hope you're comfortable and you have the lights turned down low. In a world full of questions, the unknown frequently rears its ugly head. At any time, any of us can face the unexpected, the supernatural, the unknown. Join me now as we journey through the fringes of horror. I am your host, Random British Dude, and this is the Random Horror Theatre. We join Mr. Jacobs on a horrifying journey into the unexpected, a chance encounter, a mysterious string of events, and an impossible circumstance. Let us join Mr. Jacobs as he tries to make his way to work. Mr. Jacobs looked horrified at his watch. He was already ten minutes late. Almost at a jogging speed, Mr. Jacobs weaved his way in and out of the streets. After a few minutes of meandering, he began to contemplate his route. To shave some time, he decided to cut off a corner and head down a nearby alleyway. He was almost at the end when, oof, he collided into an unexpected gentleman. When Mr. Jacobs had stood up, brushed himself down and finally collected himself, he looked in dismay at the sight of his cracked open briefcase laying sorrowfully on the ground. I'm sorry, Mr. Jacobs, his victim cried in dismay. In front of him stood a respectable gentleman with thick glasses, a healthy long moustache and a neat leather apron. He was about to apologise and ask the man how he knew his name when the man spoke up once more. Oh no, look at your briefcase, sir. It's a good thing you bumped into me just outside my shop. Come on in, I've just a thing to get you back on your way. Mr. Jacobs pushed open the door and a quaint little bell tinkled from above. Looking around, he could see all sorts of odd bits and bobs, furniture, ornaments. It was the run-of-the-mill antique store. He was about to pick up a quaint-looking smoking pipe when his attention was snatched by the flustered shopkeep. Here you go, sir. Hand-stitched leather briefcase. And may I be so brashed to say so, a damn sight better than your old one. Mr. Jacobs looked at the briefcase in wonder. It stirred in him a feeling of confidence and determination. He thanked the shopkeep and reached for his wallet. Your money's no good here, Mr. Jacobs. I could have not got in your way. See it as compensation. Just so you know, I've already put all your old stuff from the other briefcase into this one. The shopkeeper gave a devilish smile as he peered over the top of his glasses and passed Mr. Jacobs his new briefcase. After a short time, Mr. Jacobs had managed to cover the remaining ground fast and flung himself into the lobby of his work. The receptionist, sitting on the other side of the room, lifted her head and stood up abruptly. Mr. Langton has been waiting over 15 minutes for your conference. Room 5, 14th floor, you better get up there quickly. Picking up pace again, he gave the receptionist a polite nod as he jabbed rapidly at the elevator call button. Even though it only took 20 seconds for the elevator to arrive, it had felt like an eternity. As soon as the elevator arrived, Mr. Jacobs flew through the doors and jabbed aggressively at the button for floor 14. Mr. Jacob was screaming inside as the floors ticked by. Two, three, four... Five. He felt as though time had slowed down just to mock him. Eight. Nine. Ten. He began to panic and considered what he should say to his very impatient boss. Ping! The doors opened and he quickly stepped out. Looking left and right, Mr. Jacob became very confused. Before him stretched a corridor on both sides. A corridor he had never seen before. On a floor where he went to work every single day. Spinning back around to the elevator, his heart sank completely. In the spot where the doors had once been, stood a wall which hung the number 13. This, this is impossible, he stuttered out loud. Now listeners, a little fact I would like to tell you before we continue the story. 
The number 13 has notoriously been known as a very unlucky number throughout the ages. So unlucky, in fact, that buildings like Mr. Jacob's building made a conscious effort not to include a floor 13. The floor simply went from 12 straight to 14, skipping floor 13 entirely. So I now feel the need to ask the question we are all thinking. How could Mr. Jacobs been on a floor that could not possibly exist? Let's find out. Feeling dizzy, Mr. Jacobs leaned on the wall and tried to compose himself. He fought back to the time of the collision and realised that he must have a concussion. After a short time, he pushed himself back off the wall and began to think about the next step. He decided to himself that the best thing to do was to just walk down one of the corridors and see where it may take him. As he got around the corner, he saw a string of doors before him paced evenly up the corridor. He walked over to the first door and tried the handle, and luckily enough, the handle gave way and he pushed the door open slowly. Inside the room, perfectly sat in the middle, was an old telephone on a small round table. He was about to turn round and close the door when the phone began to ring. Ring, ring! Mr. Jacobs froze and turned back to look at the phone. Hesitating for a short time, he strode over to the phone and lifted it up. You're such a lazy boy, Jacob! You're a nothing! You will always be nothing! You disgust me! Mr. Jacob dropped the phone in horror. The voice he heard was his mother's. The only problem was, his mother had been dead for five years now. Mr. Jacob raced down the corridor. He ran for what felt like forever as he weaved through the maze of corridors. He then heard another ringing. At first he did not know where it could be coming from. Then he realised the ring was echoing from inside the briefcase in his hand. Setting the briefcase down on the floor, he slowly undid both the latches, one by one. After an intense pause, he lifted the lid very, very slowly. His hands were trembling. After a moment, he peered inside, but there was nothing but blackness. Jacob scrambled backwards as he heard a growl echo from within. Then his blood ran cold. His eyes latched onto something rising out from the briefcase. At first he did not know what it was, but gradually, inch by inch, he saw what looked like a pair of horns. Followed shortly by the disgusting, ugly, twisted face of his mother. He turned around screaming and sprinting forward. He could hear his mother stamping rapidly behind him, getting louder and louder. He knew she was catching him up. Straight ahead, he saw a large glass window with light flooding in. In his utter terror, he crashed through the window and tumbled the twelve floors down below. Mr. Langton slowly walked shocked by the receptionist. His face was pale white and he looked very sick. He turned to the receptionist and he said, He was only 15 minutes late. That, that's no reason to throw yourself out of a window. Well, well, listeners, looks like the friendly shopkeeper may have struck again. But I have kept you all too long. I hope that while you have been listening to me, you had not noticed the time and become late for work. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and I will see you next time on the Random Horror Theatre. Thank you.